Hello again YouTube, I hope you're all doing well today. So we're going to carry on with a little bit more find, love or die trying as it's been quite a while since we played this uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing how the story progresses. We were supposed to be making a little bit of drama according to what Kat wanted. We needed to take a different girl out on a date to sort of boost the ratings. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I hope you're all ready. Do remember to give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment as well in the section below. It would help me out loads if you did uh but without further ado let's just get on and uh, see if we can find some love or maybe just die trying oh yeah this is how it ended last time around wasn't it we were told that we were a liar by the mysterious voice that came to us in our dream so maybe we'll get some more clues at the end of day two about who this mysterious person is but for the time being we are going to get on and try and do as cat requested and make things a little bit spicy, create some drama by going on a date with a completely different girl. The gamer girl, I can't remember what her name is. The green haired girl, we went on a date with her last time. So we're gonna pick someone else. I think we're gonna go with Violet just because she could be quite fun, but we'll see. So let's, let's just dive into it. Episode two, the second one. All the girls are here. What's Scarlet looking so shocked about? I don't know. We kicked off our morning with a delicious meal made by Violet. So tell us more about your dream, Terra. Oh yeah, that was it, Terra. Sorry. I don't really remember much, but I was in a video game and I was getting hit on by a lot of pigeons. Uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? What if it was a sign? I'm sorry, what? It was a dream, nothing more. I don't see how. Ali had a devilish grin on her face. I think it is a sign, Tara. It's a sign that you should try making video games. The world needs more pigeon dating sims. Y you're right. There's no time to waste. Oh, off she goes. Terra ran off. Oh my, are you certain that was a good idea to spur her on? Of course. Seriously, what's the worst that could happen? Scarlet's just still in disbelief at all of this. That's amazing. I felt a chill run down my spine. Oh, there you are, Sophia. I've been looking for you. It's time to decide who's your other soulmate candidate. You remember what we discussed yesterday, right? How could I forget? It's not like I've ever forgotten anything important before, except for, well, everything. Save the snark for whichever poor girl you end up seeing today. Ow, that stings. It'll be just between your two soulmate candidates from here on out, so choose wisely. Wait, wait, really? So, if we don't get chosen, what are we supposed to do? Well, for starters, we're in a tropical paradise. Think of it as a vacation. Soulmates aren't real anyway, so it's not a big deal. They're not real? Oh boy, Sophia, you might want to pick your second soulmate candidate quick. Wait a minute, Kat. Will we be splitting up the group after today? Nope. Don't worry, you'll still be able to hang out together. And who knows where that will go. Oh, okay. Phew. Good to know my battle plans will still come in handy. <laughs> I mean, uh, friendship plans. Good to know I still get to see my new friends. Yes, sir. So without further ado, Sophia, who's the unlucky girl? Excuse me. I don't like that phrasing, cat. We're going with Violet, sorry. I'd like to spend some time today with Violet. All right, we'll make it happen. She doesn't look too happy about this choice. Sorry, buddy. We're both suffering together. Give us a minute to set up the scene, then go find her. Oh God. I had just gone outside the mansion to find Violet when a white limousine drove up and stopped in front of me. Oh, it's, it's him, James. 
One stepped out from the driver's seat and walked towards me. Sophia, good day. Please do enter. Off with the formal talk. Just... Please just get in the car, Sophia. You already heard what she did to my bro. What did she do? Huh? He opened the passenger door and ushered me inside. Like, did he die? I thought he was the one who was supposed to die because he blew up the kitchen. Maybe she didn't. I shrugged and went inside. What's the worst that could happen on a death game dating show? We sat in silence as one drove me to what looked like some sort of fancy restaurant, then escorted me inside. Oh, this is nice. Bonjour, Suter. I trust my new butler brought you here safely. Yeah, he did. What's going on, Violet? I thought I would give you a chance to have some alone time with the star of the show is all. Have you never been on a date before? Uh, of course I have, and I've read all the manuals on the subject. I'll have you know, I've studied every book of the lusty new Asian maid series and know them all by heart. Okay, well you've got some ideas, that's interesting. Impressed, I'm sure. Yes, I'm impressed. Very impressed by your reading material. I'm impressed, Violet. Oh, it was nothing. I like your butler as well, by the way. Got my eyes on him. Pardon my interruption. I've brought your food. Please be seated, honoured guests. Violet and I sat at a table in the centre of the palace as one placed each dish onto the table, one by one. He seemed to linger over the meatballs as he brought them over. No, are we... <laughs> Why am I so excited about this? Thank you, one. Please don't hold yourself back. I don't think I will. This food looks incredible and probably worth more than my life. You're right on both counts, Sophia. I'm ecstatic you like this assortment. I planned it myself. You're a chef? You could say that. Uh, what do you mean? Anyway, um, tell me more about yourself, Sophia. There's not much to say. Amnesia is a hell of a drug. You do not remember your past? Yeah, bummer, right? Then rest assured, I will find the finest scientists in all the land to help you recover your memory when this is over. That... that would be great. Thanks, Violet. Think nothing of it. It's the duty of those with more to give back, no? Though, have you ever thought, perchance, that this is actually a blessing in disguise? What do you mean? Many of us would be happier not knowing what drags us down. That may be true, but still, I need to know. You sound just like the reference examples in the romance manuals. Consider me impressed. You know, those manuals are just regular old fiction novels, right? Ha! <laughs> You're quite funny, Sophia. An admirable trait to have. I like that. Uh. Anyway, you haven't told me about yourself, Violet. Who are you? What do you do for fun? I'd like to know. Being the scion of the Valentines does not leave much time for fun, I'm afraid. Even on this show, I spend most of my waking hours managing the Valentine's restaurant businesses. Oh, okay. Do they have, like, a chain of cannibal restaurants? Okay, interesting. But I suppose if I have a spell of time, I enjoy... Baking. I, I don't get it. Why are you embarrassed by liking baking? Everyone has a hobby. Uh, baking is something of a servant hobby, according to my parents. When they found out I was enjoying that, well, they made sure to stop me from ever doing it again with all the restaurant work. It's a bit ironic, isn't it? You know what? I do know of what, but what do you mean? Who cares what your parents think? Here on this island a million miles out, they can't stop you. How about we find some time together to 
bake up for lost time. I would never say something like this, but thank you, game, for making visual novel me say that. She laughed like a child. <laughs> that would be... That would be wonderful, Sophia. I'll make some time on my calendar for you. We spent the next few hours enjoying the finest meal that money could buy. Each course was better than the last, just like each chapter of The Lusty New Asian Maid, according to Viola. Something tells me that the same applies to every moment I'll share together with Violet. Okay. <laughs> I was about to enter my room when I felt a familiar tap on my shoulder. It's Cat. Were you happy with what we did, Cat? Please say yes. Hey there, Sophia. Got a minute? I want to make Terra and Violet jealous. It would be good for ratings. Uh, sorry, what? Oh, you're no fun. Anyway. She opened the door to my room and walked inside. I followed suit. I've got some good news. I'm all ears. Turns out my strategy worked. We've got enough ratings to avoid early canning. Don't get me wrong, people loved it when you and Terra were the main ship, but... Now with Violet as some serious competition... Let's just say online threads went from optimistic and united to downright murderous. Well, I'm glad to hear I get to live another day. For now, at least. But that'll change quickly if our viewers don't feel like your relationships with both of them are progressing. Cat laughed, then took a seat on my bed. No pressure again. You know, I'm curious how you're feeling about Terra and Violet. Between those two, do you have a favourite? I don't know. I think I like both of them. Terra's probably more like me. I don't think we should be telling her though. Because you know she's going to be using this against us. And I don't want to pee off Violet. I'm going to say Violet, just in case. Just in case. This is covering my ass. Though I've known her for less time, I think I like Violet more right now. I don't know as much as I'd like about Violet just yet, but I know more than anything that I just want to keep learning more about her. Really? Well, I can't say I'm too surprised, but maybe just a little. Let's see where, th where things go with her. Something tells me you'll be hanging out with her again soon enough. Okay. Anyway, that's it for today. Keep it up and who knows, you might just be the first one to make it out of here. The first one? What do you mean? So everyone else is like dead and haunting this place? Oh, come on, girl. Night, Sophia. Good night, Cap. She left my room, closing the door behind her. Guess it's time to turn in for the night. Uh, are we going to get a visit from our friend? Maybe. Huh? I see waves crash soundlessly against the shore and dissolve to nothing before they reach my feet. This must be my dream. She's next to me. I can't make out her face or even hear her voice, but I know it's her. The way the pale moonlight dances in her hair is so nostalgic. You look like you've seen a ghost, Sophia. You. Somehow, I can't see your face nor hear your voice, but I know it's you. I'm fine, don't worry about it. I hear my own voice speaking, as if it were coming through an old cassette. Are you thinking about what's going on out there now? Ten bucks that it's better on this side. Out there, every day is a fight to stay alive. Here, at least there's food, shelter, a place to call home, and most importantly, high speed and unlimited internet. That is a bonus. I reach for her hand and hold it tight. And people that love you. I know, and I love you too. I know how lucky I am to be here, but I still want to see the other side. Why? You wouldn't survive a day out there. Same goes for me. Because it's real. It's real life. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe this is like the consciousness like of one of these girls and we are actually aware that we are not real. 
Maybe we're trapped in a simulation. I don't know. Okay, interesting. Where things happen that aren't planned by some producer. Where living isn't just following a script. I'd do anything for a taste of it. We've been over this. I know. I'm just so tired of this. I... What the hell are we doing here, Sophia? I felt the same way she did, but there was nothing we could do. Not if we valued our lives. There's no escaping from here alive. We're living another day. Hmm. But what are we living for? I sighed. <sighs> you really want to see the other side that badly? Yes. I laughed. Even when she had that look in her eye, I knew there was no convincing her otherwise. Even if she had to go alone, she'd see it through. And I loved her for that. I guess you'll owe me ten bucks pretty soon. She laughed. You'll be the judge of that. Interesting. Episode 3. Take a chance. Then you set the meat at around 300 degrees for 40 minutes. Mmm, okay, got it. Terra furiously scribbles down notes. Wait a minute. Couldn't I just cook it at for 600 degrees for 20 minutes? That's not quite how this works, I'm afraid. But the math checks out. Uh, what's going on? Oh, good morning, Sophia. How do you do? I'm teaching Terra the proper way to prepare a pot roast. So far, I'd say it's going pretty well. Terra will be the one to prepare lunch today instead of me. Terra turned one of the dials on the stove as far as it would go to the right. And the student has surpassed the master. On second thought, perhaps I'll prepare an alternative course. One moment, please. Oh, ye of little faith. Time for the moment of truth. Lunch is served. Oh boy. <laughs> Tara was nervously clasping her hands tight. Ah. Everyone's surprised. It's delicious. I did it. Oh my gosh. Tara did a little dance in celebration and gave Violet a high five. Should I become a food vlogger? I'm a cooking savant. This talent shouldn't be wasted. Psst. Hey, Violet. What is it, Sophia? Is this what you cooked or is this what Terra cooked? Violet smiled and winked at me. I don't know what you're talking about. Ah, okay. She sipped on her soup contentedly. I couldn't help but smile back at her. Damn, this was the best meal I've ever had. Granted, my memory only goes back about three days, but still, it counts for something. I figure it's about time to talk with Kat about my next date, but... I felt a tap on my back. Kat, is that... I turn around and the girl in front of me was as surprised as I was. Cat? No, this is Ali. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, Ali, what's up? She looked to see if anyone else was around before she spoke. Have you noticed anything weird lately? What do you mean? Something about this show gives me the creeps. I went out for a walk in the forest last night, you know, because it's gorgeous and all. But after I got there, I must have dozed off for a minute. Taking a nap in the forest at night? You're braver than the most, Ali. And let me finish. When I woke up, I was back in my room, on my bed. And I swear I don't ever remember walking back. Huh. That sounds pretty crazy if it really happened. That does sound weird. Not gonna lie does sound weird. You sure you didn't just have a weird dream? <sighs> now that you mention it, I tried Scarlet's cooking for fun last night. That was a big mistake. Maybe I'm just imagining things, but did you notice anything strange happen last night? I don't think so. It was just a regular night. I had a conversation with Kat in my room, but that was it. Damn, five girls to date wasn't enough, huh? 
Sorry, couldn't help myself. Well, I guess I'll be staying away from Scarlet's cooking and chalk it up to a weird-ass dream. Thanks for listening, Sophia. It's my pleasure, Ali. See you later. She ran off just as fast as she had come initially. Someone's in a hurry. Hey, Kat, I was looking for you. Afternoon, Sophia. Same here. I wanted to ask, did your guys do anything last night to Ali? Hmm, not that I know of. Our staff leaves the cast alone at night. I guess there's nothing to worry about. Kat's been honest with me so far about everything. Hmm? Right? Anyway, more importantly, it's time for phase two. You've done pretty decently with setting up Terra and Violet as your soulmate candidates. People are eating it up. The romance, whatever. More importantly, every time they're on screen, we get one hell of a ratings boost. From here on out, you'll only be going on dates with either of them. That'll be your best bet to get out of here alive. That sound good to you? You almost make it sound like I have a choice. I'm glad we're on the same page as always, Sophia. But enough with the pleasantries. Who's the unlucky girl today? Haha. <laughs> uh, I guess I'd like to spend today with... I wanna, I'm gonna ask Violet what she was doing. She cooked that meal. I'm gonna hang out with Violet. Violet. Nice. I kind of had a feeling you would. I think Violet's somewhere around the mansion. Lead the way. I found Violet taking a walk outside the mansion. Hey Violet, what's up? Hello there, Sophia. I thought I'd take a nice afternoon walk. This place truly does bring back memories of home. You lived on your own personal island? Not quite that bourgeoisie. Anyway, I've got a surprise for you. You want to see? For me, I... I motioned for her to follow me into the mansion. I asked Kat to pull a few strings and, well, we have everything we need to bake whatever we want now. Oh my. Violet looked at me with childlike wonder in her eyes. Let's get right to it then, why don't we? She was practically shaking with excitement. Her smile and laughter was positively infectious. We decided to make a chocolate cake. It was her favourite flavour and I don't remember mine. I mean, that's an easy choice then, isn't it? <laughs> That said, I also don't remember a thing about how to make cakes, but with Violet, that wasn't a problem. She got me up to speed with a soft and steady hand, and before long, we had the cake in the oven, baking away. I wish it took longer to make. Seeing Violet do what she loved most was a treat. When she pulled the cake out of the oven, she looked like a kid on Christmas Day. Now, just for the finishing touches, a little more here and a little more there. She was in her own world, humming away as she danced around the cake, decorating it as she went along. I couldn't help but smile and watch her in adoration. She's pure happiness right now. I wish I could take this moment and just freeze it in time for safekeeping. I can't wait to share this with the others. But first, Sophia, would you mind testing it? You don't have to ask, believe me. I'm first in line to try it out. Thank you. I just am unsure if what I make is worth eating or not. Uh, why's that? My family's caretaker, Shirley, was the one who taught me to bake. Besides my sister, Shirley was the only one who ever bothered to try what I made. Sometimes I worry they told me it's delicious just to make me feel better. I took a little off the top of her cake with my finger and licked it off. It's delicious, Violet. You better believe it. Would you want to help me a little longer? I'm having far too much fun ju to just stop now. I've just started making some cookies and I find I quite enjoy your company and help, Sevilla. I'd love to. Let me know how I can help. Violet passed me a bowl of cookie dough, then a tray. All you need to do is make little cookie-shaped pieces out of this dough and then put them on the tray. 
do not put any of them too close together on the tray or it'll become something of a mutant cookie in the oven. Yeah, I'm, I'm that person that ends up having them all stuck together whenever I've tried to bake things like that. Have you lot done that? Yeah, every time without fail, it's just an oozing mess on the tray. My bad. Got it. No mutant cookies here. I ripped off a piece of dough from the bowl and rolled it into the size and shape of a cookie. Perfect. You're a natural. Thanks, Violet. I... Wow. In the time it took me to make one, Violet had made six perfect cookies. She moved with mechanical efficiency as she kneaded balls of dough into perfectly shaped cookies. Wow, I thought you were great before, but you're really incredible. How long have you been doing this? Uh, perhaps since I was about, say, five? To this day, it remains the only thing I can best my sister at. I finished making another cookie as Violet finished three more. She held up one of the cookies and raised it to her face. You've gotten quite skilled at this, Sophia. I just wanted to say again, thank you for arranging this. I'm on top of the world right now. It was my pleasure, Violet. Gosh, she's adorable when she smiles. For a few seconds, we kept working on the cookies in amiable silence, our eyes locked on each other's. You said you had a sister? Why, yes, indeed. Viola Valentine, first twins in the family, she... Oh, I'm out of room on my tray. She flashed a devious smile in my direction right before she lightly threw a dough ball at my face. What's with that cheeky... Before I could react, it splattered against and stuck to my face. She burst into childlike laughter. Nice catch, Sophia. Perhaps you might try using your hands next time. Oh, it's on. I couldn't stop myself from smiling as I grabbed some ammo from my own cookie tray and threw them at her. She dodged them with ease and laughed. <laughs> it's quite humorous how an old caretaker managed to do what you are struggling to do now. I interrupted her gloating with another dough ball throw. This time it made a satisfying splat against her left cheek. Strike! Oh, you are so going down. Her smile turned devilish as she grabbed another dough ball. Oh shit. I've only a second ne before her next volley, I... Go on the defensive. I ducked behind the kitchen counter. An instant later, a dough ball flew above my head. Ha, nice! While I was gloating, Violet threw a dough ball that splattered against my forehead. Ah! And then another landed right next to it. Ah, oh, mercy! And then another. I crumpled to the floor in defeat. I declare this my victory in absolute confidence. She laughed as she pointed at all the dough on my face. I took the opportunity to interrupt her speech with another dough ball. It splattered right against her left cheek. Oh, you're even more dead now. Forget surviving this crazy TV show. I don't know if I'm surviving the next five minutes. It was like looking a tiger dead in the eye. Violet reloaded her ammo and was winding up for another throw. It was all I could do to reach for one more ball and scream in defiance. Bring it on. Some say you can still hear my screams in that kitchen to this day. Impressive. We finished cleaning up after our impromptu food fight and brought the desserts that survived the Great War to the porch. Her smile and laughter were infectious. Pardon me, but I guess we can rule you out being a baseball player before you had come to this island. She put a hand tenderly against my face as she wiped off some remaining dough. We locked eyes yet again. Her eyes were practically magnetic. Thanks for playing along, Sophia. I... I suppose it's been too long since I've had that much fun. So, thank you for indulging my little whim. It was a lot of fun for me too, Violet. Don't mention it. Besides, I think I got a few good hits in to make it worth it. I'm worried for you. It appears your amnesia is getting even worse. Violet laughed as she picked off some more crumbs off my face and licked them off her finger. Her eyes seemed to linger on mine. Kiss! Sorry. We need the ratings up. Come on, a bit of spice? Yeah, that's what people want. 
I do hope we can spend more time together soon. I quite liked this. I'd like that, Violet. I had a lot of fun with you too. You're full of surprises, you know. Let's wait and see. There's more where that came from. We spent the rest of the day talking and eating little desserts together on the porch. Though Violet seemed quite distant when I f first met her, I learned that the real Violet was nothing like that at all, and full of surprises. She could be unexpectedly shy one moment, then mischievous as a child another. One thing's for sure, being around her makes my heart skip a beat, and time fly. Before I realised how much time had passed, it was already pitch black outside. I was about to turn in for the night when I heard a knocker on my door. Hey cat, I thought you weren't going to come over tonight. Sorry about that, I got tied up in some things. Is everything okay? Good as always. Care to join me for a walk? Sure, that sounds nice. Then away we go. We walked at a relaxed pace, with Cat slightly ahead leading the way. So how are you feeling about day three, Sophia? Who's your front runner now? I still like Violet the most. Because we've had two dates, although we've learned her a bit more. I guess. Violet is still the girl I like the most. If anything, getting to meet and know the other girls has made me like her even more. Violet's an incredible woman in every way. Something about her just keeps pulling me in. I just can't get enough of that, you know? Ah, oh, that's cute. Also a perfect answer for the cameras. Thank you very much. I guess you'll be giving her fan base some more things to go rabbit over soon, hmm? You can say that again. Oh, spicy. Perfect. Well, I'm happy you've got at least one girl you're really interested in, but it helps you've got chemistry with both. Tomorrow, we'll milk this love triangle by having you date the girl you didn't date today. Okay, right. That's, that was going to be my plan anyway, Kat. It seems seems like we're on the same wavelength. Gotta sound good to you. I'm noticing a pattern in making it sound like ha I have a choice when I really don't. None of us really have a choice nowadays, I'm afraid. All right, I gotta get back to editing today's footage. You ready to head back to the mansion? Sounds good to me. We walked back in comfortable silence. Night. See you later, Cal. If we get caught trying to escape, there's no telling what would happen to us. It's a chance we have to take. I know, but you need, we need to know what we're up against. We know the island better than anyone by now, Sophia. We'll be fine. I'm not so sure. Damien's brought in that scientist for his latest experiment. Oh. Okay. All I've heard is that she's the one who built the prototype, the one Damien used to turn six into a vegetable. Oh. Hang on. Not to mention the old test audiences too. Shit. So we were eating people. Maybe they weren't like actual meat, but they were just turned into vegetables that were then chopped up and used in the cooking. That's kind of, that's crazy stuff. Interesting. Damien. Give me some demon vibes there, sir. I think they must have killed at least a hundred people by now, and they still haven't perfected it. Wow, that's quite a lot. <laughs> if we get caught, I get what you're trying to say. Are you still with me on this? It's not too late. You didn't even have to ask. Of course I'm with you. Who are you? Somehow I know you're close by. But every time I try to see your face, the dream ends. <sighs> Episode 4, second second go. Second date with Tara. I walked down to the kitchen where the girls were having breakfast. People. So, how was the date? Yeah, tell us. Tara was furiously scribbling down notes with the title War Plans in bold. Oh no. Oh boy. It was 
really quite nice. We made this cake and the cookies yesterday together, Sophia and I. I... I hope you all enjoy it. They're amazing, Violet. Thanks for making it for us. Thanks so much. They're so delicious. Tara scribbled, War of Attrition is likely not an option. What are you writing there, Tara? Nothing. So, how come there's cookie batter everywhere? No matter where I look, I can see batter on every surface of the kitchen. It wasn't just the batter. Violet and I had knocked over quite a few things in our firefight. Uh, that's... You sure it was just bacon together? Oh, I thought it was more than that. I charaded as if I was heartbroken. God, I handed it to you, Violet. I didn't think it, you had it in you. Oh my gosh, she's alluding to something else. Violet, don't say anything else. Quick. The hole is opening up. Hubba, hubba, stop it, Ali, stop. Wait, no, nothing like that happened. Ali and I laughed and made, up, made finger guns at each other. She's the wing woman. I like it. <laughs> I don't get it. Don't worry, Yui, don't worry. You'll learn when you're older, I guess. That's because you're a good person, Yui. Uh, what I think... Ali, I think what Ali is trying to say is that Violet and Sophia... Ali stuffed a cookie into Scarlet's mouth before she could finish her sentence. Um. Wow, these cookies are pretty useful. You gotta teach me how to bake the or make these sometime, Violet. It would be my pleasure, Ali. Oh, teach me too. Why should Sophia have all the good stuff? Uh... We spend the rest of the morning fooling around in the kitchen. Before date time. Oh, my head. Are you okay? You don't look so good. Not so loud. Ugh. My head's killing me after I had a ton of wine last night. That is a mood. Is Kat not just me then? We've all been there, girl. I feel bad. Get some water. Have, have, have a drink of water. It will help. <laughs> I still had to edit our broadcast after that, which didn't help. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the woman who decides whether I get to live or die every night. And she was very, very drunk when she just did that. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Clearly, you're still alive, Sophia. So it's all good. Believe me. You'd drink two if you worked here. Just look at the Brothers Five. Working at Futuristic Evil Corp, TM, has to come with some benefits, right? You'd think, but we still have to pay for dental out of pocket. <clears throat> Before I forget what this show's all about, today's the day you go on a date with... Uh, who was your other soulmate candidate again? Terra. How much did you drink last night, Kat? Uh, whatever. I knew that. I, I'm just testing you. Duh. Right. Alright, let's get this second date with Terra started. Woo! Whoa, someone tell the world to stop spinning like a little bitch. I'm pretty much fucked, huh? Think so, Chief. Think so. I knocked on the door of the games room. Hey, Sophia, what's up? I thought I'd check in and see how you're doing with your game. Let me show you what I'm working on then. Tara handed me her game device. Not all the art's ready yet, but I'm hoping it will be done soon. It's a farming game. I had to ditch the pigeon dating idea after, well, finding out you know, it was already done. Uh, that's really a shame. For the whole world, really. But in this game, you get to live in a village out in the country, make friends, raise crops, and... Decimate all the invaders with your giant mecha pigeon death machine. Wow. That's quite the concept that I was... That was a twist. That was a twist I wasn't expecting, Terra. I'm sure no one has ever done that before. 
And there's a million possible weapons combinations and... That sounds cool. Wow, that sounds cool. I'd love to play it. I'm curious, how come you decided to make a farming game? Um, good question. They just got a special place in my heart. I used to play these morning till night every day. You can probably tell, I'm not really a go out and party kind of person. To be honest, I don't know enough people to go to parties anyway, but whatever. Sometimes it's more fun to just do your own thing. Sometimes it can be more fun to stay indoors and just do what you enjoy, yes. That's how I feel about it. Enough talk. Try playing it. I want to see how you feel about it. Alright, here we go. It's like demented angry birds. <laughs> the title screen displayed with a click. Star Blue Valley, stop. <laughs> uh, I was actually playing Stardew yesterday. It's been a while for that too, but I really love Stardew. It's so much fun. I was a mecha pilot who got tired of life in the mecha corpse and decided to move out to the country to become a farmer. I was a pretty good one at that. Every season I'd learn to plant, water, and harvest new kinds of crops. And die in the mines. <laughs> that would be me, dying in the mines every time. I'm like, whoopsies. Tara would give me advice for farming in every season. Her face was so close to mine. She'd watch my every move with a pensive expression. Farming and fishing felt great, but fishing was almost impossible to do at first. Really? Do people struggle with the Stardew Valley fishing? Like, please let me know in the comments, because that is probably my favourite bit in the game. I love fishing, I'm sorry. It's like the most boring thing ever, but I'm just sitting there going, oh, let me do it. I know it's boring, but there's just something I enjoy about it. It's relaxing because it's so repetitive. I'm going to move on, but yeah. The mecha parts of the game felt incredible. You could even get to know the villagers and have relationships with them too. It was just one thing that was a bit weird. First, wow, what you have so far is incredible, Tara. You think so? Yeah, really, it's incredible. I never thought you could combine farming and being a mecha pilot in the same game, but you did it just fine. Thanks, Sophia. That's nice of you to say. There's just one thing I was thinking that was a little off. And what's that? Any feedback would be great. I feel like the relationships with the townspeople were a little weird. The dating aspects didn't really feel right. Ah, uh, I knew you'd notice that. It's kind of embarrassing, but... I've never actually dated before, so I have no idea what it's really like. And to be honest, I've never really had a real friend either. Oh, I'd be your friend, Tara. If you were real, I'd be your friend. If it's not too much to ask. Her voice suddenly reduced to a whisper. Maybe you and I could be friends? I'd be honoured to be your friend. That said, please don't trap me in a video game again. Sorry, what? Anyway, watching you play gave me some ideas. Want to help me with testing them? Sure, I'd be happy to help however I can. We'd both suggest ideas, she'd implement it and we'd test it together, and repeat. It just kept getting better and better. Tara's smile and enthusiasm was contagious. I couldn't help but be excited for her and in awe of her drive. We spent the rest of the day working on her game, but it only felt like minutes. I'm just glad it wasn't another virtual reality game. You and I both. <laughs> I don't think that would have ended too well if it was. I was feeling too restless after today's date to wait in my room, so I went for a walk downstairs. I decided to walk to the kitchen and opened the fridge. Turns out there were some leftover cookies that Violet and I had made together. I grabbed a few and wolfed them down. Delicious. I got a case of the midnight munchies. I figured I'd do my civil duty and help finish the cookies Violet and I made. Right. 
Only a good Samaritan would finish all the cookies, so no one else would have to make that sacrifice. I'm just too good of a person, I know. Gets me in trouble sometimes. Anyway, I've been meaning to talk to you. What's up? How'd your date with Terra go today? Awesome. It was great, I have to admit. Terra's very different from my initial impression of her. I feel I'm seeing the real her now, and I like that. I like the sound of that. Who would have thought you'd have... S you'd say something like this after your rather unique first date, huh? Life sure has a sense of humour. Anyway, you're probably safe for at least another day thanks to the ongoing rivalry between Terra and Violet. The stakes are rising and so are our precious ratings. So without further ado, it's time for phase three. What does this mean, oh god? You've only got one date left with each of them before the final day. So make them count. You're not out of the woods just yet. Will do. All right, good. Well, I need to get back to preparing tomorrow's show. And you better rest up for tomorrow. You only get one th first third date with a girl, right? Sounds good to me, Kat. See you later, Sophia. Good night, Kat. And thanks for the help. I realise I'd probably be screwed without you. Don't thank me yet. I walked back to my room and plopped on my bed. Time to get some shut eye. All right, we're out of the mansion. Next stop, the beach. I told you the staff wouldn't suspect a thing. That's because nobody's been stupid enough to try to escape till now. Maybe people should have been a little more stupid a little sooner. Easier said than done. She grabbed my hand and pulled me along. We'll go through the forest. Come on. We ran through the forest as if the devil were chasing us. The truth was not far from it. Okay, I can see the pier now, and the boat. We're this close to getting out of here. She always put on her bravest face when she was afraid. We're going to make it, right? Of course. The boat's just a little further, and no one's on our tail. I can't believe it. We're finally getting out of here. We're finally... We're finally going to leave, Sophia. About time, if you ask me. I've dreamed of this moment every day since who knows how long we've been trapped here by now. But I never thought I could escape till I got to know you. I laughed. You're giving me too much credit. It was your idea. Find any other sane person and they would have told you the same things. Sane people didn't try to escape with me. I wouldn't have stayed sane if it weren't for you, though. She laughed. That was my favourite sound. Let's go back to matters at hand. Sorry, the chain, like, that was my favourite sound. That's the past tense. Like, because before we were all just saying, oh, I like it when she does this. I like it when she does that. But then maybe I'm just losing the plot. I have gone insane. I'm the one who's gone insane. But I don't know. Maybe we are actually just dead and we're in purgatory reliving everything that happened. Damien got to us in the end with his demon powers. We both know that this is where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. Now it's just a mad dash to the finish. You ready to run? No. Huh? I'm kidding. Let's go. That favourite sound of mine once more. I hope it's not the last time I hear it. Hmm. 